Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to another IP Tut. My name is Phil, and today I will be going over the butterfly fairy effect. Again, before you guys probably know the particle one, they kind of just showed briefly a particle system floating through midair to kind of show off the Foundry's camera tracker. But this time, I will be using not the Foundry's camera camera tracker, but the built-in uh, camera tracker from CS6, and uh, also showing you how to create these 3D butterfly wings inside of After Effects. No 3ds Max Maya Cinema 4D necessary to complete this task. Uh, simply Adobe products all in all, which is of course Illustrator, one of my favorite programs, and After Effects, another one of my favorite programs. So um, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see here, as I go ahead and preview, you can see these particles floating off and this looking really majestic and fairy-ish and the butterfly animating looking really, really real per se the body being a, a light source and then you can also see the lens flare flickering off the front of the lens giving it this realistic feel and then of course i can see the pictures closer yada yada blah 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 this may take forever so i'm gonna stop talking and get to work so first what we're gonna go ahead and do is i had to find vector wings and so therefore i chose or i found vectorlady.com check them out her out it's probably a lady since that's part of the name and this is a guy and he has issues within himself and his heart anyways um this is the wing i chose you would just simply copy and paste it into a new file here hold on one second resensing wing okay so um what i did was copy and paste two copies of it into um cop <laughs> lost my train of thought right there uh, copy two copies or paste two copies into one file my project file or artboard size is 1500 by 1500 uh, it can be any size you want it can even be 100 by 100 but I choose 1500 all the time because that's just how I roll um, anyway so you just copy into two copies one at the top one at the bottom and uh, the reason for that is I'm gonna turn off the bottom copy as you can see here the wings themselves has holes in them Okay, and I knew I wanted the wings to be solid, but also be kind of see-through, opaque, whatever you want to call it, transparent. Um, so we can give it more of an actual feel of a real butterfly, but all in all be see-through and be very majestic or whatever the case may be. Anyways, so I knew I needed a second copy. So what we did was paste in a second copy, and then all you do is you would press A, come up here. And you can start deleting these holes out. So uh, direct select tool up here over your top left. Okay. And you click, press the delete, and then delete again. And then it gets rid of these holes. And that's why there's the bottom copy. Once again, click, delete. You can see it gets rid of that line segment there. And then you press delete and it gets rid of the entire line segment. And you just do that for all these holes here. And you would then change the colors to such also really quick before i show you the colors um i then scaled it up to fit inside of the uh the artboard and then i just moved it over to the to the left because inside after effects we're going to create it and make it a 3d layer and the pivot point for it to flap is going to be on this side okay so the colors i chose we're going to start with the very very bottom copy it is right here pause the video so if you need to write it down or copy it into your project file or whatever the case may be so there goes that and then over here the fill was these colors here two three and the stroke was these colors here okay so um our after effects project is um set up and ready to go also what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna leave this here because i'm going to at the very very end updated and show you why I always use Illustrator and After Effects together whenever I'm doing anything, particularly for anything, um, because the dynamic link ability and um, just the sheer fact of being able to update it. Now, you can do it, you know, in anything, just rename the file, but I just like Illustrator because it's, it's the best. Anyways, moving on. So, here we have, okay, so we have our wing. We brought it in. We brought in one copy, okay. Let me delete this second copy really quick. Okay, so we brought in our wing. I'll turn off everything else really quick. Okay, so we brought in our wing. 
we grab the pan behind tool. We put the anchor point directly in the center or we actually started off by putting it on the left side and then you can go ahead and click it and go transform and then center in view. Okay, and then wherever that, that um, anchor point is, watch this. So we move it over, right? And then we tell it transform, center in view, and it's going to put the center anchor point directly in the center of the comp. So you just move it to where you want it to be and you center it to view and you're set and ready to go. Okay, and then all you do is you then have a second copy and do exactly the same thing. So you would just grab it, click it, transform, and then just flip horizontally. And then it just, yeah, so you got your two copies. All right. Okay, maybe I didn't explain that right. Here, I'm going to do it in actual real time. I'm just trying to go through it so it's not a three and a half hour tutorial for you guys. <laughs> okay, so we have there, we will press Control D duplicate the wing as you can see right click transform and then flip horizontal there okay <laughs> okay so there we go so now we have two wings and we are set okay now what we would do is we need we have the wings set up and everything's fine and dandy at this point we need to have um we need to have the body that's going to, to control the particles and the light source for the body so what we need to do is we will create two things I need you to create a light new light okay and the light will be a point light all right just delete that and one more thing did I get rid of the butterfly controller I'll delete that too okay so light or layer new light point light that's fine and then we're going to also create Something that's going to control everything all in all, and that will be a null object. <clears throat> so, right click null object. Okay, so the null object itself comes already into the center of the frame, so we don't have to worry about that. But the light source actually doesn't. So, um, position, we will, on the Z, we'll zero it out, and then copy and paste the current position of everything else inside of the light so everything's centered and on the same point everything is exactly in the center of the frame and ready to go um the light itself we oops, i hit delete i need to hit enter and we need to actually rename it emitter e-m-i-t-t-e-r space a um i always name it emitter a now the new old the new null object that we created we're going to rename so you just hit enter on it and we're going to call it you can either call it butterfly controller or just controller whatever makes you happy uh, I always just call it butterfly controller going about my day save always save save often okay so that's set. that's set. Um, now we need to link everything now what we're going to do is everything needs to be turned into a 3d object so the null object let me move that camera up first I'll show you how I got the camera here in a minute don't worry about that controller 3d object bam um, emitter is already it's a light so it's already already a 3d object and then our two wings both need to be 3D objects. Okay. Now, when we turn it to a 3D object, you can see that it's there if I go over it, but it's invisible or it's actually dark. And the reason for that is because of the light that we put in is not casting any light onto it. We need to go into them and both select both of your uh, your wings and uh, double press A, and then come over here to where it says Accept Lights. We're gonna make it off, and then voila, they pop back on except lights off voila and it pops back on save it again i'm gonna close all of those parameters really quick and press there we go okay okay so that's it so now we have our wings back everything's in the center of the frame now we just need to link everything to the proper uh to the proper links <laughs> okay so uh the butterfly controller which is the null object is going to control everything so we're gonna link the position of the wings and the emitter to the null object. So what I always do is I will go uh, hold down Alt and click. It gives you the parameter on the positions and you just pick what to the position of the null object as well as everything else here. So Alt, click th the stopwatch and pick what drag to that position there. Now we're good. 
save it again we should be set and ready to go let's go ahead and give this a try we'll grab our and let's go ahead and move this over and everything seems to be following it that's good that's a good sign that's a really good sign okay so everything's connected and basically at this point you have your butterfly okay um you can see here if we go if we grab our wings actually let's rename this okay so we're going to press enter we're going to call this wing l or l wing or whatever you want to call it just so you know it's the left wing and we're going to go wing r for right wing okay so if you want to make it flat all you do is get your rotation and you want to get not the orientation but the rotation itself and we're going to rotate it on the y-axis as you can see here it flaps okay it looks a little weird right now because it's not a 3d camera but um it flaps right there but everything's set because even with that wing being offset like that we have our controller for the butterfly as you can see it still follows okay so our butterfly is set up now let me just quickly go through all of the steps and parameters for the actual butterfly themselves okay so you have your butterfly set up and oh before i continue i got to show you the tracking method okay so tracking this thing um let's turn all this off for now so you have your footage which will be downloadable for you guys um as soon as i find a source to allow me to, to do it because mediafire flagged my account and got rid of it because of the hologram and the uh um sniper scope stuff was all um downloaded and i don't know i guess it's something with the terms of use and whatever whatever anyways so you have your footage which is just basically um me <laughs> me shooting a plant which is kind of nonsense but yeah that's basically it it's just shooting a plant rotating and we're good so let's see all we do at that point is you would just grab that come over here to window if and this only works if you're using cs6 built-in camera tracker if you're using any other version you might want to go to the foundry camera tracker of some sort which is pretty much kind of sort of the same thing but not really but kind of anyways hit track and this pops up and it starts going through the steps we're going to stop that though and so what in the end after that what you would get is something like this so now you get all these dots or x's um let's see if i can scale them up a bit okay there we go so you get all these little markers and stuff uh and i'm gonna run preview it you know go through it okay that's really big okay and what we're looking for is for this right here to be tracked and we are because we want it to kind of float in float in and then land on this little flower bud right here let me deselect that okay can you guys see that that little flower bud right there so we have this we have that and we come here right click create actually it would give you an option to create null and camera create null and camera from an option right here but since I already have it made, it's not going to give me the option again. So then after you click it, the null will pop up, bloop, which is right here. Actually, it's not right there. You know what? No, we're going to do it this way. Delete and delete. I uh, will just go ahead and select it. So here, here, right click, create null and camera. So now we have a null and a camera, our null object, which is directly placed on that part. It sticks to it and a camera, a 3D camera. Okay, so we have that created. We're good, set, ready to go. The null we're only going to use for the position of the butterfly for when it lands, and that's it. Um, the camera is obviously for the camera for the entire effect. So let's hop into the very first comp, and I can show you what we did here. Okay, so um, to make the wings flap, I use a series of uh, loop expressions. Okay, so. Don't worry, it's actually really, really easy. Don't get all freaked out and be like, I don't know expressions, because neither do I. That is probably the one aspect that I don't know. Okay, so the wings themselves is set to 40, like, okay, so how can I explain this to you? Um, let's see if I can get it back into here. Turn this crap off, turn this on, butterfly controller. 
Okay. So here. When you rotate it, you have it set to a degree. Okay? It's uh let's turn on the rotation. Let's, let's just keyframe this. Okay. Close all this out. Okay. So you have it set <coughs> to a rotation. Get rid of all that. There we go. Okay. So it's set to a rotation. Okay. And then you would just simply rotate it in the opposite direction. So for the right wing, okay, you can see we have it lifted at this point right here to let's say we'll bring it forward because this takes so so primarily this is just up. This is just the wings coming up, going in this direction. Okay, so we would just go like positive, like let's just say seventy. Okay. We'll just say 70. And then you would then keyframe it to flap back down to a negative number, maybe like negative 40. Okay. We'll just, yeah, we'll just call it negative 40. No big deal. You're definitely going to want to uh, play with this. And this aspect may take a while, but you'll be good. Okay. So as you can see here, it flaps and it flaps. Okay. So um, all you would do is. Right click or hold down Alt and click the stopwatch stopwatch for the Y rotation. Okay, then this pops up. You come over here to this little arrow here, you click it, and then you tell it, um, you go over here to property, and then you go loop out cycle, right here. So this is the one you want. Okay, and what that does is that will set it to loop. Okay, so we can then just move this all the way over, and if I scrub through this really quick, you can see. That is continuously flapping now. It flaps the entire time. The entire time that the clip is going to play, it will flap. Now for the left wing, it's exactly the same, but you got to watch for the rotation parameters. It's because on this one over here, we were set to to positive 70. Since this is on the opposite side, we would actually end up going negative 70. Okay, negative 70. Let me get rid of that. And then keyframe it over, um, and then we would go positive 40 since it's on the opposite side of the right wing and that is that once again alt click it over here property loop out type equal cycle and click into there save it and let me see if i can run preview this really quick for you as you can see that it will flap now the keyframes themselves are actually uh pretty far apart i would probably obviously move them closer together but this is just for this part in particular as you can see um, when it flaps now you can add other keyframes in here to to adjust it you can bring them all in like such no I double clicked bring them all in like such and it would actually essentially end up flapping faster here, let me see if I can get a more dramatic sense of it so here see as you can see here it's flapping faster so that's how you control how fast they flap okay now let's go back to the original who okay so that's how we get the wings to flap so we're set you guys probably already knew that um let's see so we have it coming in now at this point to actually get it to move because we obviously already have it flapping okay always turn on your motion blur and stuff like that as well um we'll give it more realistic the keyframes of which i chose for the flap uh let me see if i can I think it was like five frames. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, yeah. So it's five frames. The parameters for those, I have it set. Once again, I think it's it's forty on on the on the down flap, and then it's like, or is it forty? Yeah, it's forty on the down flap, and then it's like seventy when their wings are supposed to be up in the air. Um, but you figure it out. You play with it. Whatever looks good to you. Just make sure motion blur is on to make it look more realistic. Other than that, you're set. Now, uh, controlling it or getting it to land. Remember when we made that 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 null earlier? All you would do at that point is, because that null is actually this null right here, you would position and you keyframe the null object or the butterfly controller. Okay, so I have my controller here. Okay. I simply keyframe where it was going to land. As you can see here, the position, 
So this is where it's going to land, okay? And then I just kind of back animated at this point. And then I just came over here and chose where I wanted it to fly into. And at that point, I wanted it to come in from the left side of the screen, so I placed it over here. Now this part may take you hours to actually place it, but you're good and set, ready to go um, there. Uh, also, make sure you rotate it. Yeah, let's see if I can get it right here. Okay, so rotate it to where it looks like it's actually traveling in the path um, of wherever it's flying. Because, as you can see here, we can rotate the null object. The wings and everything still follow because we have it set up. Um, and you can control it and rotate it in any given direction. Um, just make sure it's, <laughs> it's facing the direction that it needs to face to look good. As if it's fine because if it's flying this way it's not <laughs> it's not gonna work out very well as you can see it's just gonna look weird so you're able to point it in the direction to make it look as realistic as possible all right um, that that the particles probably the biggest part you want to know about the particles themselves is actually just trap code particular uh, emitter emitter particular particular okay so the way I set that up I knew I wanted to have a stream of particles moving from the butterfly, okay, and um, to kind of give it that, you know, that following, but then also I knew I wanted a second set to actually float up into the air. So all I did was create one, which was this one. This was the main one. As you can see, it just kind of follows through. And then it lands and disperses. Now this is going to take hours upon hours. This was the hardest part actually throughout the whole tutorial was figuring this out um, and get it to look the way I wanted it to look. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm slowly scroll through this, and you guys can go ahead and see my parameters here. Since you will be using my footage, hopefully maybe it should match up pretty well. If you're not, then you're gonna have to tweak it a lot. Um, you know you want it to be visible, and then as it's flying through on this side it's going to die off so opacity over life um, change the color to whatever you want it to be the physics the physics is the biggest thing your gravity for this one the gravity was set to uh, 1680 because I didn't want these to float up um, and I kinda wanted them to kinda float down but you know just kinda stay where they were it's kinda tricky to explain um, you just have to practice inside a particular and mess with it a lot um, let's see rendering nope none of these were used just the physics the air I had turbulence set on a turbulence field wait for this one it was it affected the position it gave you that little wiggly look as you can see here it gives it more of a as it's floating through it messes it up and it gives it more of a wavy feel to it um, no spin no no spin, no rotation or anything like that. The turbulence field at this point, let's see. So all these are set, yada, yada, yada. Once again, just play with it. You're going to, you're, you're going to be all right. Trust me. If you have any questions, once again, drop a comment. Um, we're set there. We're set there. We're set there. Now, after this, after we, I figure out that this is what I wanted, Okay, all, all I really did, to be honest, was I duplicated it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one off. We're going to go duplicate. Okay, and then I came over here to the physics. And real talk, all I did was take down the gravity. Okay, and then I also went up here to uh, particles. Or was it the emitter? The velocity. And... <laughs> Velocity will then spread it out, okay, as you can see here, it spreads it out a little bit more, and then the gravity allowed it to rise from the butterfly, and then maybe mess with the particle amount, and basically gave me this right here. Let's see if it's going to, let's see if it's going to ramp through this real okay it seems like it's going pretty fast I should actually probably start from the center anyways though hey, let me bring this over a bit so we're gonna start from here okay so here let's let's take a look at this really quick so as you can see those ones are rising the middle ones are kinda just 
falling a little bit, but not too much as it would be following the uh, the butterfly. So let's take a look at this really quick. See, those are rising. The turbulent field is messing with it. It's making it jump and wiggle, giving it more of a majestic feel to it all. And we're set right there, as you can see, just like that. Um, just play with particular. Very, very, very good plugin. Probably one of my favorites from Red Giant. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions about this, I really don't know how to explain it besides the fact that you have to just play with it. Um, I played with it for hours upon hours, and then I tweaked it just a little bit, and it gave me an entirely different feel to the particle system. It was it was crazy. Before, like when the butterfly landed, the particles all fell and kind of dispersed, and it was it was cool. But then I had to re redo the track, and then it just it didn't work. So then I had to make them float up and. Yeah, so play with it. You'll figure it out. It's not that hard. Um, just play with it. That's what she said, right? <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, so um, that's that. That's that. The light, after that, everything is optical flares. Let's see. Where's the... That's the fairy controller. Where is the emitter, the light? There we go. Bam. Okay, so at this point, there's two optical flares on here. One for the body of the actual butterfly itself. And that's simply, you just have it set to track lights. So at this point, if you made any other lights, if it's set to, to track lights, at any point there was another light, watch this, duplicate, it would then just track that light as well. So you can actually duplicate all these and have multiple, as you can see right here, look at that. I just created another one simply by duplicating the emitter, and that's why it's set up that way. And we can we can continue we can do that all day long, people. We can do this all day long. Oh crap! Except for that part, we don't want to do that all day long. All right, so we can drag this this way, and drag this down. Oh, too far. Bam! Look at that. Now we got multiple butterflies. Now at this point, you would definitely need to. Um, duplicate the wings and set it up and set it up and you know have multiple butterflies even change the colors and be set but yeah it's set to to track lights um where was i and then the other one's just for one uh who okay one one flare is for the lens flare and the other one's for the body let's see if i can get this oh wait here we go Bam. Okay. So this point. Yeah. Uh lights, particles. I think I covered every thing. Let's see. The wings. Oh. Yes. The animation of the wings. Okay. So when butterflies land, okay. Now this requires some attention to detail and maybe some research. Um me, I kind of just went off of remembering. When I saw a butterfly land, um, let me get rid of these particles so I can go through this a little bit faster. Um, you, okay, so when a butterfly lands, it flaps. <laughs> of course it flaps, Phil, it's flying. Um, they actually tend to land and then keep their wings like straight up vertically into the air. And so it's kind of just mimicking all of that as you can see here, the wings are like straight up and then they, they usually flap down to spread their wings and then, yeah. So <laughs> just research butterflies, look at butterflies the way they fly. Um, and, uh, I think, I think this, this keyframe right here is probably what sold the fact that it was a butterfly and it gave it that realism because this is how they operate they when they land they put their wings straight up in the air and um when they're just chilling i i don't know how to explain it it's just what they do i don't know why next time i see a butterfly i will ask it for you and then come back with an answer um that is it we're good there we're good there we're good there okay so let's see we can that's pretty much the tutorial there. If you want to stop, you can. I'm going to go through a few extra things. Um, usually whenever I do a project, I always film in 1080, then I scale it down to 720. If you notice, most of my videos, live action or not, are always 720 um, because it gives me a little bit of room to play around. Now, what I mean by that is 
rotation. What I did was the 1080 is, um, what is it, like 34% bigger than a 720 comp or something like that. I don't know the actual numbers. 100%. You can scale 100% 1080 down to a 720 at 66.7%. So 34 point three whatever the case may be okay so that gives us 30 34 point three percent amount of room or 33.4 whatever it is you guys know the math as you can see here so i scale it down here uh and add a rotation sometimes do my color correction in like three different four different comps and whatnots and whatnots uh just yeah i don't know what that was for i just wanted to tell you that just because i can uh, added rotation you can do all kinds of stuff whenever you, your frame is bigger that's why it's really good to like film in like 4k and then you bring it down to 1080 because you have so much room to play with and reframe resize recut and um whatever the case may be so yeah 4k is really good but i'm only using 1080 anyways that was nonsense more nonsense is this right here so the reason why i always like to use um, Illustrator is because of this. Watch this. So we have our wings. Okay, we have our wings set up and we have our project file. Um, and this is probably going to fail because I haven't tried it in this comp yet. And I'm just going off the top of my head just for nonsense at this point. Um, this is just extra stuff just because I want to. Um, we're going to try this. We're going to go back into After or Illustrator. Okay, and we're going to grab a new set of wings. We're going to grab this set of wings from that pack we got from Vector Lady. Okay. Now we're going to, let's shut all this off. We're going to just turn all that off. We're going to paste in the new wing. Okay, let's size this up a bit. Okay, this is looking pretty good. We're going to rotate it just a tad bit. Uh, that's too much. Right there. Put it on the edge, just like before. We're going to, ooh, scale it up. Okay, so this wing is definitely designed differently. That's fine, though. That's fine. We're going to be all right. Um, whew. I'm starting to get a little scared about this. Let's make sure it's in the same position as before. Okay, so yeah. But this is why we use vector stuff, so watch this. So we're gonna turn all this off. We're gonna save it. Save it. And let's do exactly what I did before. We're gonna duplicate this. <laughs> I press Control D. Uh, Control C, Control B is in boy to paste behind. Okay, turn off the top line. We're gonna come in here. And I'm actually going to pause this and get rid of all these really quick. Give me one second. All right. Okay. So we're back. Okay. So um, I went ahead and removed all those holes that were in there. Okay. There's a few, but I'm not. I'm not going to fix those. We're not worried about that. Okay. So what we're going to do is just move all this over. Everything from that to that. Bring this one up. Okay. So what I just did right now, if you were trying to figure out what I just did, um, you can actually copy all the parameters and or all the effects and stuff from one to another so watch this so we have all this set up so um we can grab this okay so you see this dot that means that there's an effect or an appearance or something like that what we'll do is hold alt okay click it and drag it up to the one we want to move it to so we want the bottom one to be the bottom one bam zoom in here okay and then we come up here hold alt we want the top to be the top voila and there you have it. But we're going to make this a different color. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted the opacity and everything else to change. But here, let's change this so you know we're actually doing this. We're just going to change this to a pink. Let's make this a pink. Uh, we'll make this one a pink as well. A purple, a pink, a magenta, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to argue with you right now. So we'll change that. And we're going to change this. We're going to change this to green. Let's just make this hideous. Okay, so we're set. We're set. You know what? Hold on. We're gonna make this. This one right here. Let's change this to orange. Sounds good to me. That is terrible, but we're running with it. So I saved it, right? Just saved it. Same file as before. Hop into After Effects. Come over here. Click this. Right click, and we're gonna go reload footage, and voila. As you can see, right before your eyes, everything is updated. Come over here, and this butterfly actually updated as well. Now, it's a little smaller than before, so all we have to do is go to our butterfly controller, hit S for the scale, and we can then scale it up, be set and ready to go. 
okay and that's why i do what i do um and i mean you would go through and update all the glows or whatever the case may be um change the opacities uh does the butterfly stuff have glows on it let's see let's take a look at the effects yeah i got a glow on the wings um stuff like that let's see particles you guys are understanding anyways this has been almost 40 minutes or 40 minutes whatever the case may be um hope you guys enjoyed this that's it it's 40 minutes um i will be at vidcon this year so if you guys want to stop by say hi if you guys are going to be there let me know hit me up on twitter let me know where you guys are going to be at during the day it's in august whatever the case may be i'm going to vidcon you should go to vidcon i'll see you there uh yeah well, that sums up this IP tech. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up if you learned anything new today. That way others know to go ahead and watch this video. Don't forget to subscribe as well. That way you can stay connected and know when I release other videos.